So give me one minute and I'll tell you what a transistor is in a way that you will never forget and it will be so easy you'll wonder why somebody didn't tell you before. Why am I holding a resistor? Well, because a transistor, trans means to change and resistor is resistor. So transistor means a resistor that can change. It's one of these things you can change. You may have seen one of these. It's a slider like on a stereo control or something. You can go, you can change the resistance. You can either change it quickly or slowly. You can snap it back and forth or move it very slowly. But it is a mechanical transistor. It is a resistor that will change. And you say, wait a minute, that can't be, it can't be that simple. And it, the answer is yes, it is. There's only two differences between this device and a transistor. One of them is that a this device will work with AC and most transistors are DC only devices, so they have a plus and minus. This has no plus and minus. And the other thing is a transistor is electrically controlled, whereas this one I'm controlling with my finger through the use of you know mechanical motion. But that's it. Those are the two things. So so there you have it. One minute and you know everything there is to know about a transistor. But just for just for fun, let's go cover some of the details on it. Let's look at the details on one of these transistors. We'll use a big one since it's easier to see. But they've all got three connections. In this case, this one's a little trickier because it's got one, two, and then the case is the third connection. But it, otherwise, it's no different than any other transistor. You'll notice the E here. The E is the negative connection. So this is a DC device. Like with batteries and like with all battery devices, you have to be careful about which is plus and minus. So the E is the negative. The E stands for emitter. Some scientists had to come up with a fancy name for it, so it's called an emitter. But it's the negative. The case is the positive. Uh, again, it's got a scientific name of collector, but it's the positive. So you hook your negative here and your positive here. And what we're going to do, like this mechanical slider resistor, we can control the resistance of those two contacts over here. By changing this, well, this third connection allows us to change the resistance between the negative and the positive. We'll go over that in a second. I'll show you some examples. It'll be much clearer. But again, it's quite simple. If you can make your connection between the negative and the positive, the emitter and the collector, and then with a very tiny amount of electricity between the base and the emitter, you can control a huge amount of power or resistance between the negative and the positive on the transistor. So let's look at some examples. Here's some example transistors. They all do the same thing. They are all variable resistors. They all have three leads, so they're all doing the same type of job. Now here's a really big one. It's used for uh, controlling a lot of power. It can be bolted to a big chunk of aluminum called a heat sink. And like any type of resistance, they produce heat, so you got to get rid of the heat. But this one can be bolted onto a big heat sink, carry away a lot of heat. Uh, here's a little bit smaller one. Uh, it won't carry as much power, but uh, again can be used with a heat sink. Uh, here's a smaller one. And uh, more, this is more of a radio frequency. I believe I took this out of an old uh, AM uh, radio transistor radio. This one can, is a metal case and it can also have a heat sink put on it. It looks like a pair of wings. They just press it over, but uh, not as much energy again. It won't handle as much energy. And then you have very small ones like this. But again, they're all doing the same job. They're all variable resistors. Here we have a simple circuit with the transistor down here. You can see we have a big automobile 12 volt uh, lamp over here, an incandescent lamp, which consumes a lot of power. And you can see it's operating at 12 volts. And I got this little watch battery down here, which is almost dead. It's been leaking. So let's see if by putting some electricity between the negative pole and the base, if we can turn on this light bulb. Get my hand somewhat out of the way. And there you have it. This very tiny amount of electricity applied between, you can see the yellow wires, applied between what we call the emitter, the negative connection, and the base, the controller, by applying a very tiny amount of power that comes out of this uh, battery, we can control a great deal of power uh, in that light bulb back here. 
Very similar setup. We have the transistor here. It's going to control this big uh, light bulb, the automobile light bulb. Got the power supply back here. And the power supply is passing through the transistor, which is got it turned off right now. The bulb is turned off. And we've got this very tiny little battery back here that's going to give us our power between the base and the emitter, between the base and the negative contact. And we're going to control the power going in to here, the voltage going in here with a very tiny variable resistor, very tiny variable resistor. And by moving this, we can very accurately control the brightness of that light bulb with a very tiny, with a very tiny control right here. We can make this get brighter and dimmer. We can just turn it on or off but we can also control the brightness. So we can use the variable resistance of the transistor to change the power passing through the light bulb. There's something we've hinted at and that is there's two ways to use a transistor. One of them is to use it like they do in computers where you just switch it on and off, on and off, on and off. And the other one is where you control it smoothly, nicely over a range. Uh, for example, we can turn this up and down like that. And these two modes, one of them is digital mode, you're going to run into that, where it's the computer mode where it's on, off, on, off. And the other is called analog mode. And analog mode is what you'll find in your stereo amplifier, in a radio circuit, and so on, maybe in a jewel thief. There's two types of bipolar transistors. Uh, and they do exactly the opposite thing, so they're not interchangeable. It's one of those things where if you get the wrong transistor, you can make a serious mistake. And these two transistors look pretty much identical other than the color and the number on them. But if you look up on the internet, and you look up an NEC B772, you'll find out they call it an PNP transistor. And what does that mean, PNP? Well, I always think about the middle initial. The middle initial tells me what this transistor does. The N tells me negative. So what happens is when that controlling pin, called the base, and I looked that up too, it happens to be this one over here. When that turns negative, this transistor turns on. Now that's kind of strange, but that's the way it works. When that pin goes negative, transistor turns on. This one is exactly the opposite. This one, when that controlling pin, the base pin, goes positive, this transistor turns on. This one is called a NPN, and P for positive, it's the middle initial, and this one turns on when it's positive. So those are the two basic types. Again, not interchangeable, just make sure that you have the right one when you're building your circuit. The last important thing you need to know about transistors is something they call gain. Uh, it's on the spec sheets under a heading called H, a little h, f, and e and they call it gain or amplification. So we saw on our other circuit where we took a small watch battery and we could control a large amount of power coming out of it. Well, that's what it's all about. It tells you how much power you can control for a little bit of power input, the total amount out. And it's pretty much a ratio between the two, power in versus power out. And uh, it ranges, well, from one to the hundreds. So. It's an important thing to know. If you get a transistor that's uh, the HFE is too low, if the amplification, the gain, the sensitivity is too low, it will not turn on and off and you'll, you'll have a failed experiment. So one of the things to watch out for again is sensitivity. You need to have a transistor that will do the job for you. So now you have all the knowledge to put together simple circuits like this jewel thief and what it means when somebody tells you talks about the negative lead of the transistor, which is the emitter, or talks about the positive or the base, and how it controls the transistor and what the transistor is doing, turning it on and off, switching it on and off, either in digital mode or analog mode, and what it means to be PNP or NPN. So you have all the information you need to go out and produce your, your transistor experiments. Well, I hope you found it useful and interesting.